Uh, my name is Leonard Hattrick. I am privileged to be the People's Church Warden here in St Mary's Church of Ireland, RD. There has been a, a place of worship here for the last 800 years, and a lot of the time it was in ruins. It was a monastery originally, and it was connected up to Hatchet's Castle, the St Joseph's Hospital, and the college at the back of the church. The uh, director here is the Reverend Michael Graham. He's based in Drada, uh, St Peter's Church of Ireland, Drada. This place is very special to me as I was uh, baptised, confirmed and married here. And it's not many men can say they were married in their own church. It was in, a, in a ruins in the mid-1700s. It was rebuilt in the late 1700s and again in the 1800s. You can see uh, where the hole in the wall is here, there was a rude loft, which connected over to the other aisle on the other side. When there is no oil there now because it was demolished. But there was a platform across from wall to wall. Uh, there was also a big crucifix up there. The monks used to cross over this platform and they'd also tell stories and pictures before people could read and write. And uh, it was marvellous. Well, the organ you can see here was put, placed here in 1896. It was came in two organs from London, and it was originally for Dumboyne Church of Ireland, but it was too big for them. So Canon Lockett Ford, who was here for over 50 years, decided to take the organ and put it together himself. This key was made by Canon Lockett Ford in 1940. It's, uh, the doors is a lot older than that. And I got a few made in, in latter years, which uh, when I priced first was 100 punt and uh, we couldn't really afford it. So a, a friend of mine, another train driver in Dublin, cut one for me out of a piece of a railway track, and I still have it. When, after the Reformation, the, this became a Church of Ireland church. The Church of Ireland, or Protestants, protested against articles and holy water that was coming into the church. In fact, now, there's very little difference in our religions. The book is practically the same. This beautiful artwork you see here on the arch was done by John Hargrave in about 1900. He died later on in 1913 when he was carrying out work to the belfry of the church. In 1899, extensive restoration work was carried out on the church. This East window here was installed in the memory of Chichester Fortescue, Lord Carlingford. The stone medallions of this window were designed by director Mr. Ford. The most famous person to be interred in this graveyard is William Parkinson Ruxton Esquire. He was the local MP for RD. He lived in Red House in RD and also later on in RD houses, which is St. Joseph's Hospital. Where we are now is in the Lady Chapel. This part of the church was used for evening services on a Sunday when we had a lot of people attending. The Bible you see here was presented to Canon Lockett Ford in 1927 by his son, who was a rector in High Great London. You can see there's lots of seats. We don't use this part now, as I said before but you could fit 200 people here sitting. Years ago in Ruxton's day, you would have been 160 at the morning service. Now our service at 9.45, three Sundays a month, is attended by an average of 18. This plaque here was in memory of Arthur Upton Fox Ruxton. He was a captain commander in the Third Punjab Infantry. He fell nobly at the head of his infantry in, on the 11th of March, 1868. The oldest object in the church is this fine Celtic font. It's about a thousand years old. They were working at Mansfield Town Church and they dug it up there and they brought it here for prosperity. The rope which I'm holding is attached to the bell which was installed in mid-1700s. 
It had been decommissioned by Fred Jukes in, in 1948, as it was too dangerous to ring it. But in the millennium, we got a grant from the council to renew the bell and leave it safe that it can be rung. And it is now rung every Sunday. History has it that there's an underground passage from St Mary's Church and the monks used to go underground to the Chantry College, which is here in McCraner's Orchard. Other reports of passages from the church is to Hatchet's Castle. We are now standing beside the family plot. This is the vault of William Parkinson Ruskin Esquire, MP for RD, 1790 to 1800. His wife is also interred here, and his sister Mary Ruxton. There is another vault which we, on the other side of the church. This is the other Ruxton vault. Members of Ruxton family also interred in this vault. Inside this store, there's a spiral staircase which leads to the belfry. When, when we have to go up and do work in the belfry, this is the way you get up. And you can also get onto the roof as well. The plaque that you see on the front of the church was placed there in 1812, after the reconstruction of the church. As I said, it was in ruins in the mid-1700s. And underneath that is the holder for the gas lamp, which was supplied by the town gas. Outside the church here is a portion of an early cross thought to have been a market cross, which once stood at the market square of R.D. E. was erected on a modern shaft at the instigation of the Reverend Ford in 1925. This cross was actually dug up in the town many years ago. This, this sketch here was done in 1792 and later it was in the Loud Archaeological Journal 1975 edition. It shows that there was an aisle on the left hand side of the church as you're walking in. There's two churches in this union, the parishes R.D. and Cullen. R.D. is the mother church. There's a service here in R.D. at 9.45 every Sunday. Also, we have a service in Cullen on the fourth Sunday of the month. I'm honoured to be Director's Church Warden in this parish. And I hope in later years that somebody comes along and takes up the mantle from me. Goromara Goth.